Kids, today we are working on a Boku no Hero Academia commission taken at MTAC, so keep watching. Right here I have the sketch. We've got Bakugo and we've got Deku. The first thing I'm going to want to do is cut it out with some scissors. Now that we've got this cut, the next step is to do a graphite transfer. And what we're going to be transferring onto is fluid cold press easy black paper. This is cellulose based watercolor paper and it comes pre-bound in a block. And what I like to do for my graphite transfers is I actually like to use the chipboard backs as the surface for me to apply my graphite. And I have here a couple of General's graphite sticks in 6B. You want a really soft graphite because what we're going to do is we're gonna apply graphite to the back, flip it over, tape it down, and then use a pencil to transfer that graphite by pressing down really hard. That's why this was sketched with blue pencil. You can use any kind of color pencil you like. You can even use a regular graphite pencil, but using a different color makes it much easier to see where we've already transferred. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that graphite. Now that we've got the back covered, I'm gonna go ahead, erase this, cause I don't need it. <laughs> Flip it over. And we've got here our nice clean paper that's already bound on two sides, so we don't have to stretch this. Next step is, I actually think I wanna go this orientation. And then I'm going to tape it down. And I like to use washi tape for this because it tends to be low tack. It's not really gonna tear up the paper surface. And you wanna get it nice and secure. You don't want it shifting as you're doing your transfer. And I'm super cheap. I tear my washi in half. That way it's not, you know, you don't want additional adherence to the paper on either side that just kind of complicates things. So you want your strips as thin as possible while still, you know, being a useful strip of tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish taping this down. So the next step is to use a pencil. I like using a mechanical pencil and kind of apply enough pressure so that you're able to actually get the graphite that you've just put on the back of the paper to transfer onto your watercolor paper. And it's gonna take some pressure, uh, but it doesn't have to be super dark. I am currently using a Pentel Graph Gear. Uh, this is the 1000 model, so it's like an all metal body. This thing wrecks my hand, so I had to put a nice, cushy grip on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Our next step is to go ahead, remove our graphite transfer. As you guys can see, a lot of the graphite we wanted transferred, a lot of the graphite we maybe don't want transferred. So the next step is just to clean this up with an eraser. A small eraser, if you've got one, is best. It'll help you get in there and you know clean up the details. And you can either tighten this up again using graphite pencil, a graphite pencil, or you can move on to the next step. All right, guys, I've gone ahead and I've erased all the excess smuts. So the next step for this process is for me, I like to use a clear wax crayon. These are watercolor crayons, but you could also use any wax crayon. So even say Crayola crayons to actually, you know what? I might just use that because these will actually add a color accent to it. And for my con watercolors, I like to do a bit of an outline in wax, and that way I don't have the brush transferring into the character's skin or the character's hair unwanted. 
So Deku's main superhero costume seems to have a lot of teal on it. I don't have a teal crayon handy, so I'm going to use blue. I could also use green, but I don't want his hair to get lost in that too much. And Bakugo's main color seems to be red and orange. I'm going to go with just red for this. And this is just super simple. We're just going to do an outline of each character. lining with crayon. This is going to cause a wax resist. It's going to be a barrier that the water can't easily cross. And you guys might have noticed that I used a little scrap of paper to kind of protect the paper from the surface of my hand from smearing or depositing grease onto the surface of the watercolor paper. Even if you have very clean hands, of course you guys know your hands do get oily and they do ex... ex exude, excrete oils and grease as just part of being human, right? Well, unfortunately, that can cause smearing of graphite and, wa and sort of like oil slicks or resists on the paper surface. And I'm just incredibly careful about that. So, you know, an ounce of prevention saves us a lot of pain. I'm going to go ahead and get my surface area cleaned up and prepared for brush -out. So next, we're going to apply a layer of clean water using a large synthetic round. And I've already got my brush out and ready to go because this is one of those things that you got to kind of do quickly. So you guys can see I mixed some of Bakugo's color over here on Deku's side and some of Deku's color over here on Bakugo's side. It's kind of in keeping with the nature of this commission and what the commissioner requested. Now I'm going to let this dry fully at least overnight because it is very saturated. There's a lot of water on the page. So I'm just going to leave it as is and walk away for the evening. The next step is to use a drafting brush and go ahead and remove the excess brush -o. And I recommend you do that over a trash can. Then I'm gonna use clean water, paper towels, and a nice soft brush to kind of seal my brush -o down so it doesn't reactivate in an uncontrolled way. Now I'm going to let this dry fully before I begin watercoloring. So this has had a chance to dry overnight. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up and apply the skin tones. And I'm going to do that in this clean Daisy Well palette that I have over here. I'm just going to use an eyedropper to help facilitate that. I'm also going to drop a little bit of water or you can use a spray bottle if you have one handy. And I'm just activating my paints so that I'm gonna get saturated colors a little more quickly. So whenever I do two characters in the same illustration, I try to vary their skin tones just a little bit so it doesn't look too samey. I'm just gonna get a little bit readjusted. What's nice is I have a new swing arm, so I can move it to actually demonstrate things. So I'm gonna grab a little yellow ochre and some scarlet red for Bakugo. And for Deku, I'm gonna grab a little bit of burnt sienna. Oh, that's a lot, a little bit of burnt sienna. Water that down just a smidge. This might be a little bit light for him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fully apply it and then mix it a little bit darker. And it actually would work really well as sort of the base for his hair. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do Ooh. 
I'm gonna go ahead and actually start filling in the base layer for his hair as well. And leave some white highlights. And then, since we don't have any areas on Deku that are touching Bakugo, I'm gonna go ahead and start on his skin color too. This might also be a little blue. So what I'm gonna do is very similar to what I do for Bakugo where I paint the whole area and then I'm gonna mix the color a little bit differently. Since this has had a chance to dry, I'm actually going to go back into his hair while we've got the same color mixed. And I'm just gonna start applying some of the shadows. I'm also going to go ahead and mix Deku's skin a little bit, not only a little more saturated, but also a little less blue. So I'm going to grab a darker brown. I'm also going to grab a little bit of yellow ochre. And then I'm going to do another all over application. And I'm going to leave this to dry. Now that both have had a chance to dry, I'm gonna do one more layer like this with the original skin tone we mixed. And now I'm gonna mix it a little bit darker. So I'm mixing in more yellow ochre and a little bit more scarlet. While his hair dries, I am going to go ahead and do the first layer on his neck and on his hands. And then I'm gonna do another layer on Deku here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of divide off, zoom in for you guys divide off the top half of the face. And then go ahead and get the shadow on the bottom half of the face and on his nose. And fill in his hands and his neck. Then using a little bit of clean water, I'm just gonna soften that edge just a little bit, not all the way around. So now that that has had a chance to dry, I'm gonna go in and darken his skin tone. And that definitely seems a lot better, much better for sure as a base. And I'm gonna apply that all over his skin so that we have like a nice starting point. Now that our first layer on Bakugo has dried, we can do the same sort of thing we did for Deku, Deku where we're kind of delineating the areas we're gonna fill. And I find this a really helpful technique if you're the sort of person who just doesn't leave room enough for shadows or you have trouble figuring out where you wanna place your shadows or maybe you don't have enough contrast in your watercolor pieces and they always end up looking very washed out and that's not really a look you want. This method can really be helpful for that. And I'm gonna go ahead and also fill in his hair just a little bit. Next, I'm gonna need to mix up a gray and an almost indigo color. So I'm gonna fill two more wells on my palette And I'm gonna start with the indigo. And it's a very, very cool indigo. Looks like there might even be a little bit of yellow to it. And I'll 
put some of that indigo in the gray palette and I'm gonna grab some Payne's Gray. So I'm using the Sakura Koi 24 color palette and this is one of my favorite palettes for doing commissions because it's a very affordable watercolor palette and I'm very familiar with it but you can do this sort of stuff with any palette that you're most comfortable using. I do a lot of color mixing and um, working with nicer colors, I guess, for my seven inch Kara pages. So when it comes to commissions, I just kind of want to keep it simple, you know, something kind of straightforward. We're also going to need to mix a little bit of white because they both have white school shirts. And I have found that white tends to be kind of best if you mix it with like a base color. So we're gonna actually grab some blue and we're gonna mix a really, really light blue. And we're gonna use it on both boys. I'm also going to do another layer of skin shading on Deku here. And I'm gonna give all of this a chance to dry. So now that their skin's had a chance to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do the first coat on their jackets. And I'm not concerned right now about the darker markers, markings because it's honestly easier for me to go ahead, paint this base layer, and then do those later on in a more concentrated color. So the jacket isn't quite dark enough, so I'm gra gonna grab a little bit more Payne's Gray and just a little bit more Indigo. And they're still a little wet to the touch. I could probably do the first layer on their pants though. And I have a feeling that's also gonna be a little bit too light. So I'm gonna grab and mix in some more indigo. Oh yeah, that's way too light. It's fine for a first color though. Let's test out our jacket color and see if it's any more fitting. Right now, I'm just kind of focusing on the bulk. I am leaving some rim lighting though. And we do indeed need to go darker. The jeans aren't quite, or rather, I guess, they're not jeans, they're slacks. The pants are not quite dark enough either. So what I'm gonna do is first I'm leaving some lim rim lighting. And then I'm gonna go into the indigo and work some in wet into wet. I've already mixed up the first shade of green for Deku's hair, so I'm gonna go ahead and start filling that in. And I'm also going to go ahead and start painting Bakugo's boots. I'm also going to start Deku's boots. As well as his tie. That has had a chance to dry. We can go in now. I wanna do another layer 
on top of the pants. They're just not dark enough. They're not quite the right color. So I'm actually going to mix up kind of a more concentrated batch on the side so I'm not polluting my original color in case, I don't know, I need to fix it somehow. And I'm going in with indigo, I'm going in with Payne's gray, and I'm even going in with just a little bit of yellow. Heck, I'll grab some yellow ochre while I'm at it, cause why not? Nope, not thick enough. Actually wants to lift the prior layer. All right, mixed it thicker. Let's let's hope this will do the trick. And I am probably going to float in indigo and Payne's gray this time. All right, and we'll see how that looks when it dries. I also want to go darker with Deku's hair. So I'm gonna mix more greens into my initial hair mixture. I'm also going to mix in a little bit of indigo. And I'm also going to go a little bit darker in some areas with the brown on Deku's boots. Not Deku, Bakugo. However, I am gonna go darker with the red on Deku's boots, so. I'd only misspoken for the moment and regarding the colors. A small goof, not a major goof. All right, so some areas on their pants are still wet, but I think none are contiguous with their jackets. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to carefully, mostly just do the shadows on these. Pants are definitely looking a lot better. Definitely moving on the right track. And their jackets are almost done. I'm just gonna Tighten some things up with a smaller paintbrush. And I also want to tighten up the white on their collars a little bit since it's a little sloppy. Add some shade and let that dry. So everything has kind of had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go in now and kind of start painting in the details on their school jackets. And it looks like we have indigo. And I'm using here a really small filbert. And what this is allowing me to do is I can do very thick lines and very fine lines quite easily just with how I twist the brush. That's kind of one down. That's two down. Then we're going to go in with a small brush and do the buttons. So I've got a nice bright yellow here. And 
and I need to do blush on both of their cheeks. And that means I need a nice clean cup of water. So if you haven't yet, now is a great opportunity to go refresh your water cup. And starting with that fresh cup of water, we're going to put some water in another of the daisy pans. Oh, it's a really cheap one. And I'm gonna grab a bit of red, a bit of pink. We'll start with Bakugo and then we'll darken it for Deku. I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna clean up the side a little bit. Since that first layer is dried, I'm gonna go in and do a slightly tighter layer. And then I'm gonna go much darker. Hmm, maybe I'll actually go a little darker right now. Poor Bakugo, I know. I wanna go much darker for Deku. All right, let's try out our darker red. And then we need to mix it dark enough for Deku here. And I'm gonna do a much bigger blush on Deku. All right, so that's had a chance to dry. I'm going to darken that up just a little bit. Oh, he looks so upset. Oh my gosh, he's super, super cute. And I want to mix his hair darker. So I'm gonna take some of his hair color, not some of his actual hair, and move it into a clean well. That way we, A, are not mixing with so much liquid. We're gonna have a more concentrated color. B, we still have that original color if what we mix doesn't work out too well. And of course, I can't do anything with it until his cheeks have kind of had a chance to dry. A little red in there, because why not? It'll actually help darken it and desaturate it. I think that will work once we're ready for it. So I'm starting in with the darker green and I really like how Deku's hair is shaded in the anime. I guess that's how it works in the manga as well, but it's black and white, so it's not quite as striking as like the green, dark blue green and then black for the low lights. So I'm trying to maintain that in the watercolor. It may not be quite dark enough though, unfortunately. And I'm also trying to maintain the rim lighting. Yeah, see, it's not, not really dark enough. Okay, so I am going to need to mix his hair color darker, but what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna go in with some indigo and dark green. And while it's still wet, hopefully we can get a little more of that color contrast. One of the problems with painting on less expensive cellulose papers is they dry so quick. They don't stay open as long. So they're a little harder to work with sometimes for these sort of like wet into wet effects. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And then I think I'll kind of keep going along that road and sort of tighten it up, make it work for me. All right, let's go ahead and get to doing a little bit more work here on Deku's hair. So I'm gonna go with a bit of green, a bit of indigo and a bit of black. I'm gonna give that a chance to dry and I'm gonna go in with 
another layer of the green indigo color after that's had a chance to dry and just kind of darken it up in places because there's not really enough contrast right now. And as for Bakugo, I'm going to grab a little yellow ochre, a little burnt sienna. And we'll just go with a really dark brown for his eyes. And go ahead and do his belt buckle, which will be yellow mixed with yellow ochre. And then we'll do the shading on it with yellow ochre. And while I wait for those to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do the black on the bottoms of his shoes. And the black laces on Deku's shoes. And I'm going to do the white bottoms on his shoes later. So this has had a chance to dry overnight and my paints have also had plenty of opportunity to evaporate. So with a fresh cup of water here, I am going to use these saturated dehydrated paints. To start outlining these figures, I found that by doing this, it really helps tighten up my mini watercolors and it makes them look a lot nicer. So think of this sort of like inking. You can use a natural fiber brush if you want, or you can use a synthetic, really whatever is more comfortable for you. And unlike with traditional black and white inking, the line weight quality isn't all that important because we're basically just inking with a darker tone. So if you have shaky hands or if you have problems with inking in black and white, this could be a really good sort of middle ground to practice. And if you want, you can go ahead and mix darker versions of the color if that's what you need. And I find doing this really helps tighten up those pencils because as you guys can see, the graphite transfer itself is not really impressive. It doesn't really stand out. It doesn't have enough weight. So doing this outlining adds a layer of dimension that these mini watercolors seem to need. Now, unfortunately, it also adds a significant amount of time. Whether you're allowing the colors to dry and evaporate or whether you're remixing the colors, it's gonna add some time to your painting. And that's something that if you want to offer something like this as part of your convention sales arsenal, that's something you're going to need to take into consideration. So I am pretty much just going to be tightening up the final details. And then I'm going to use an opaque white to add white highlights and just sort of finish 
tightening everything up and bumping up the contrast and adding a little bit more visual interest. And now that that has dried, we can finally go in and add those white highlights. And I have three recommendations for this that I like the best. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, which I have right here. White Gouache, which is an opaque watercolor. Or Copic Opaque White. And it's kind of up to you which one you want to use. They all kind of handle the same. It's okay to go with whatever's cheapest or whatever's available in your area or, you know, whatever you have around, etc. They all basically function the same way. I find, I love Signo Whites, uh, those big white gel pens. I use them a lot. But when it comes to watercolor, they don't really like marking over watercolor, or I have a lot of difficulty getting them to mark over watercolor. So I find that a synthetic brush and some opaque white usually give me the result I'm looking for. And I'm basically just using this to kind of reestablish some of the contrast that seems to have gotten lost by adding little bit of white back in and we need to do the bottom of Deku's boots finally I need to do his little brown freckles so I have a dark brown mixed up from yesterday and I'm just gonna go with that and he's typically drawn with just three, but anybody with real freckles will attest. But that's not gonna work. Oh, he looks so cute. All right, I think we are just about done. And I like how this commission turned out. I hope the customer will be pleased with it as well. So there you guys have it, Bakugo and Deku from My Hero Academia or Boku no Hero Academia. It is a really fun superhero shonen series. You can catch it on Crunchyroll. And uh, you can find out about my watercolor commissions by emailing me for a quote, if you have something in mind, if you like my art. And that is a great way to not only support what I do, but to get some original art for your walls. This was about $40. It's got both characters on it. It's got a bit of a background. You guys have seen firsthand how much work goes into these and it is absolutely adorable. I am available to do, to paint kids, to paint pets, to paint couples, to paint your favorite characters, to paint your OCs. And you can find out how to email me. You can get my email address through my blog at natosoup.blogspot.com in the about section. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, interesting, and informative to you guys. I hope maybe you learned something new and I hope to see you guys again really soon. If you're looking for more watercolor tutorials, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics page. I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye guys.